British Columbia originally, uh, and I became a professional triathlete in 2007, uh, while I was still working full-time though, um, and I was able to be a full-time athlete at the start of 2009 after uh, winning Ironman Coeur d'Alene in 2008. The most rewarding thing about you know living in the army and traveling and racing and training together is just that we get to do it together, and it's really facilitated 100% commitment to the sport and to what our main focus is every day is training the best that we can so we can race and get better and better in the sport. Um, we really like the simplicity of the life that we have. It's really easy to just find good training destinations, find inexpensive places to park and uh, train that way. We actually spent a bit of the winter, you know, trying to rent places and, and uh, take a bit of time off for the, from the RV and we were really eager to get back into it. So I think we're destined to be uh, RV nomads for quite a while. Uh, we don't find it that, that challenging really. I mean, uh, we, we end up parking in places for a month or two months at a time. Um, if you, when you're doing really long hauls, like from Canada all the way down to, say, Utah or California, um, it can be a bit challenging to, to train well while you're driving, but we have pretty good routes mapped out to park and swim and run and what have you, so. It was, a, it was a pretty good field of women at that race. It was also really hot and humid, um, and it was very early season, all of which these things have as well, this race has as well. So uh, definitely it was a confidence boost. Um, this year in general, I have started my training block a lot earlier, so I've been training pretty hard through November, December, January, so I feel like I have better early season fitness than I had last year. Um, and yeah, anytime you do really well and have a race where you feel like you performed as good as you could, that, that's definitely a confidence boost going into your next event. So I'm excited for the race here. You know, it's a long, it's a long trip. It's uh, <laughs> quite the plane ride from Kona, Toronto, Toronto here. But it's, it's, I'm so privileged to be able to see these amazing different parts of the world. And uh, the Middle East is a totally different culture, very unique, and uh, I just feel really lucky to be able to come over here and race. I would really love to race Ironman Canada. Um, Trevor, my husband, is going to do that. That's his A race for this season. Uh, for me, though, it's kind of at a bad time of year in August. Uh, I'm going to be doing IV the 70.3 Worlds and focusing on Kona, so I'm just going to be uh, cheering Trevor on for that one instead of doing it myself. Uh, a lot of it is just back and forth with our coach, Paulo. Um, part of it is you have to figure out Kona qualification points, you know, if that, that's my goal, Kona and, and Vegas, so you pick races based on points allocation and, and prize money and then the timing apart from one another and also just venues that you want to race at. So, um, you know, we both wanted to, to do Panama this year. I was keen to come back to Abu Dhabi. Uh, we'll be doing Oceanside, Trevor will be doing New Orleans, St. George. And so just sort of how they space out and throughout the year and, and what we're looking for in terms of points and whatnot. The Ironman I'm doing is Ironman Coeur d'Alene. After the crank falling off episode last year, I won a little redemption on that race, so that's going to be uh, my Ironman outside of Kona, um, and the rest are going to be mostly 70.3s. I'm excited to, to St. George and Panama are both qualifiers for high V, so I'm going to do a, a 51.50 as well and, and go to that race for some uh, fun short course non-drafting stuff. Yeah, and then the big focus always is, is trying to nail a race in Kona. I find it's really good uh, winter focus in terms of bike fitness. It's good to have, for me, I like having that early season goal where uh, I can really focus my training and know, okay, this is how I'm progressing and getting some good long rides and some good fitness in. Uh, and also because it's a shorter run and 
you don't have that quite the same Ironman recovery time, so you can get back into training a little bit quicker after it. Um, so I think it's a really good way to start the season. It's it's always fun to race when you're up against a really good competitive group of women, and so it's the best field in early season racing, so it's fun to go and sort of see where you're at relative to other people. Well, one thing I think that's really important is looking at consistency. Um, I know it can be really difficult to balance between family and work and whatnot, but if you can train a little bit every day, it will do you a lot better than sort of being more sporadic and your body seems to respond and build up better. So I know for me, what I did at, uh, as an aging athlete is I ran commute to work so I, I could get double run days in that way, running to and from work or uh, just building things into your daily routine that let you just be very consistent in your training. And of course you always have to have, you know, your bigger blocks of rides and runs on the weekend or whenever you have uh, time for those. But just trying to be really consistent with it I think is probably the biggest thing. I mean, there's so many races that I would love to do. I mean, I would love to do Ironman Canada. I'd like to do uh, some of the bigger races in Europe. But the big, the big thing for focus is that uh, you know I want to be on the podium in Kona. That, that's a huge goal. I was top eight there in the. I was eight there in 2011, and last year I didn't have that great of a race. I was 14th. So I really feel like. Uh, I can get up there, so that's that's the that's a big goal.